Hello and you are very welcome back to DaVinci Resolve A to Z, your one stop for all things DaVinci Resolve. Do you want to learn how to save time grading by getting Resolve to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you? Well, in today's episode, we are looking at one of my favorite tools in all of Resolve, the Color Space Transform tool. If you find this content helpful, please consider giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell. And before we jump in, today's unverified useless fact of the day is the dot over the letter I is called a tittle. Yeah. The first step is to simply apply the effect. So let's open our OFX panel and color space transform is actually close to up top here. So we can just go ahead and drag this onto our first node. For input color space and gamma, choose whatever your footage was shot in. So for me, as always, S gamut 3 dotcine and S log 3. For output, set it to whatever your required delivery is in our case, we are delivering for Rec 709, so use timeline would be fine for me as my timeline is set to Rec 709 scene, but just to be thorough, we'll change these to Rec 709 as well. We can see a lot has happened to the image, but if we look at our waveform, a lot of our highlight information is way off our scope. And if we look at CIE chromaticity, it's the same story for our colors. A lot of them are not being contained in our Rec 709 color space. Basically right now, what Resolve is doing with no remapping is displaying the true large values of our input. And for example, on the luminance side of things, because our input has brightness values of 1500 plus nits, and is being displayed in Rec 709, which maxes out at 100 nits, lots of it, the information can't be displayed. It is important to note though, that it's not clipped. If we pull down on our highlights, the information is still there. So with that said, let's look at tone and gamut mapping. Tone mapping is how our luminance will be remapped from its input values to our output values. If we choose simple, you can see it does a very nice job of remapping the luminance values in for us. And all this is doing is it applies a simple curve to the footage and I'm paraphrasing the manual on this. A lot of the time, simple remaps all the luminance values for us, but in brighter scenes, it may not pull in all the highlight information. You could pull the rest of the information in yourself with curves or primary wheels or log wheels and play push and pull until you get a good looking image. Or you could move on to luminance mapping, which gives us an extra level of control. By default, it looks very similar to simple. And at first, the only option available is adaption. The way I think of adaption is if the curve that the color space transform tool is applying to our footage was a contrast adjustment, then adaption is our pivot point. Now that's just my way of thinking about it, but it's not an anything official. So take that with a pinch of salt, but basically we can adjust this to favor shadow detail or highlight detail. The manual says that values between zero and 10 should suit most footage. But if you have a very bright shot, like a snowy landscape at noon, you might want to go higher. Next, let's take full control by setting a custom max input and max output. With the default input set to 100, again, a lot of the information is not remapped into our Rec 709 space because the tool is going off the idea that the brightest value it has to remap is 100 nits and our scene has much brighter values. So let's start to increase this until the brightest parts of our input gets remapped. At around 2000 nits or so, our shot has had its brightest values remapped. And with this particular shot, because there are no brighter values, 
There is no real point going higher. However, if in your shot you need to go higher, then of course do. Max output by default is correct for Rec 709. There's no practical reason to go higher because you'll just clip your data, but perhaps there's some sort of creative aesthetic that will benefit from this. If you were transforming into some sort of HDR format, you would want to set this accordingly. You could of course also go lower, and um, again, maybe some sort of creative choice would benefit from this. Lastly, for tone remapping is clip, which just hard clips the data, and if we were to add a node after and try pull back in the highlight information that we know is there, we can't because we've just told Resolve to clip it. Now let's look at gamut mapping and for this we will set tone mapping back to none and switch our scopes to the CIE chromaticity. When set to none, all the color values of S gamut 3 in this case are being displayed without being remapped into Rec 709. If we select saturation mapping, our values do get remapped into our Rec 709 color space and just how they get remapped is determined by the two sliders, saturation knee and saturation max. Saturation knee determines at what point do our input values begin to be remapped. Values below this point do not get remapped and anything above does get remapped in according to the saturation max. Saturation max is just how saturated we allow the output to be, so more or less saturated. Lastly, we have a clip option, which just like with tone mapping, hard clips data outside of our output gamut. So if I add a node after and attempt to decrease the saturation, you can see hard clipping on the scopes. Now I think it's worth noting that unless you are delivering something that needs to be broadcast safe or has very specific delivery requirements, don't obsess too much over scopes, but especially this scope. If your values are slipping out of bounds, it's not always a big deal visually because our eyes are nowhere near as sensitive to color as they are luminance. Supposedly, that's an evolutionary survival thing, but the point is, if you have graded something and you see that some of the colors aren't able to be contained in your desired color space, unless there are obvious artifacts appearing in your image, I wouldn't worry about it too much. Now, the topic of broadcast safe really is a tutorial for another day, but to show how much less sensitive we are to color than we are luminance, let's remap our gamut separately. First, I'll switch to a graded version of this clip. Right now, only my first color space transform node is turned on and you can see I have no remapping and it's as we had it before. Next is our LUT. I wanted to grade this clip with the Kodak 2383 LUT in Resolve, but this LUT is expecting a log input. So when it's applied like this, it doesn't work because we're giving it a Rec 709 input. Uh, so credit where credit is due, I learned this method from a terrific colorist who has some of the best content on YouTube called uh, Juan Malera. I'll leave a link in the description to his video where he breaks down this technique fully. Basically, this second color space transform switches just our gamma back to log and just for the sake of the LUT. See how now it looks a lot more appropriate. And now on a node between these two, we can do primary adjustments because the first transform gets us to Rec 709 and will make our footage play nicely with the primary wheels and the game of push and pull. So you can see I used the primary wheels on this node to pull way down with the highlights and push up the gamma a little. Next, we move to after the LUT and I didn't like how washed out the shadows are and I wanted the highlights to pop a little more. So I used log wheels to make these adjustments and I also made the shadows a tiny bit more crunchy with a small curve adjustment. Next, I made a hue versus saturation adjustment to make the blue really pop. 
then I did my standard vignetting and did an extra power window to slightly lift the subject, which in this shot is the belt. And you can see how much work these two nodes are doing to draw your eye's attention. Lastly is some basic sharpening. So with my grade complete, we can see with the waveform that all my luminance values are in check. But how are we doing for color? Well, switching back to our CIE chromaticity scope, we can see that a lot of our blue hues are out of bounds and some orange slash reddish hues are too. So if you're new to this concept, you may think that remapping so many color values would have a major impact on the image. So let's try it. Let's add a node and look for gamut mapping and apply it with just the default settings. We can tell on the scopes that we are now fully in Rec 709, but let's look at the image and toggle that node on and off. Not a whole lot of difference, right? In fact, if I zoom in really close, the only area you can really see this in is the red here, and it's super subtle and may not even be showing up that well for you over the good old YouTube compression. So just to sum up that little tangent at the end, our eyes are very sensitive to luminance, but not so much to color. So unless you need to, something to be broadcast safe or has to be delivered to very stringent specs, then I wouldn't worry too much if our colors are not fitting into your chosen color space, as long as the image itself is not resulting in any kind of ugly artifacting. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Did I miss something that should have been covered in this tutorial? Leave a comment below so we know to cover it in a future video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future uploads. My name is Lee Dalton. This is DaVinci Resolve A to Z. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.